Amazing what people do. Volunteered for 40 years. They all do it obviously for different reasons. You look at your own life and see why you want to. Well, we are live and we've arrived at the final destination, guys. It's almost like we've been on the Enterprise and we've gone around the, uh, the universe. And uh, now it is time for the Baileys Golden Shears Open Final. And we're going to go across to the floor and get our guys to introduce these athletes. And uh, Johnny Kay's been up there twice already. So... But they've been under a strict regime as they are, these um, athletes, and they'll be out there having cold chairs in between the events. They'll be out there eating bananas. They know about the energy they've exerted. They actually literally do know that scientifically and how much energy they need to put back in. So this will test them. So keep an eye out for them, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, they will have some fresh boys up there too, ready to, to give it heaps. Yes, that's right, Gerald. Like I tell you what, we'd, um, you know, we've got, we got Roland Smith. You know, he's the current Golden Shears champion. And we've got Gavin Much. Now, Gavin Much has been nipping at his heels for the last, last two months. You know, he's been right there. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Gavin, he's, uh, he'll be a little bit fresher. You know, he's, uh, he hasn't been up there in, uh, this evening. And roly has been up there. He was in the test just not long ago. Wondering if that'll have any effect on how Roland performs. I'd say he'll come out like a, a man possessed, actually. A bull at the gate. But, yes, I would say he probably will. And of course, we've got a wire wrapper man in uh, David Buick. So interesting stuff. I thought we might get a wee bit of applause. Come on, let's get him warmed up before he comes down here. We've got a wire wrapper man by the name of David Buick coming up soon, ladies and gentlemen. There we go, Tumor. Well, David Buick, he's a, you know, he's a phenomenal shearer. He's one of these guys, you know, his body is very, very still. You know, he shoots... When he, when he shares, you know, he just shoots from here, his body's still, posture, you know, like uh, technically, he nearly shares perfectly, but he just needs that one little break to get the red ribbon. Maybe well, tonight's the night. He's coming in as top qualifier. That builds confidence, confidence builds results. So this could be it. Well, let's bring them on, Gerald, on stand number one, ladies and gentlemen, from Napier, Johnny Kirkpatrick. Stand number six from Hastings, your current champion, Roland Smith, ladies and gentlemen. On stand number two, ladies and gentlemen, he's one of your own, David Buick. Don't underestimate this man from Halcombe. Murray Henderson, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Murray, the super clean shearer. On stand number three, ladies and gentlemen, he comes from Fongan Momana, Gavin Much. The Much Man. And a current, a current world champion shearer from the deep south in Chicago. Give it up for Nathan Stratford, ladies and gentlemen. Right here, boys. Oh, I've got a oh, bit of enough. goosebumps there, Gerald. Yeah, yeah, the, even my mic can't handle it. It's saying, oh, I'm out of here. This is getting too exciting for my mic. You see these guys, you know, they walked up, they were so focused, you know, Roland Smith, even Gavin Much, you know, just straight focus. Yeah. Nothing was uh, getting in their bubble. Yeah, dead right. They've got those blinkers on, going straight forward. So that'll be us the last time we're up here, Tuma. So um, enjoy Masterton. 20 sheet final. Don't hold back. Get in amongst it.
That's going to be good. Norm. Tuma. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Tuma. Thank you too, Gerald. Thank you, Norm. Well done, boys. So, uh, like these guys said, a fantastic oh. lineup oh. of the world's very best sharers. They're the top six that fought their way out of the preliminary rounds. Uh, and they're here in the big final, Morgie. Another final for, a lot, for most of these guys. Most of these guys have been in here before. Johnny Kirkpatrick, David Buick, Gavin Much, Nathan Stratford, Murray Henderson and Roland Smith. Yeah, but they beat down some pretty sharp up-and-comers. Oh, oh. Jimmy Samuels was nipping at their heels. And Prue, he's in the crowd, but he must have had a few of them quite worried in that semi-final. Yes, very lucky for us he's not up there probably. We'll never hear the end of it. But a lot of very, yes, you did, right? A lot of very good shearers have missed out on this, of course. But this is the lineup we have in front of us tonight. Very deserving of being up here, these guys. And uh, like Robin Kidd said, amazing athletes, these men, superb athletes. And they come out of shearing, ladies and gentlemen, the most brutal industry in the world. We have the green light, we have the thumbs up from our referee. We'll have the guys at the door, please. At well, folks out there in the World Wide Web, we have arrived, as we mentioned before, the final event for the Golden Shears for the year 2018. On my uh, immediate left here, we have uh, Phil, and on my right, we have Doug Lang. So we're into it already, and Doug, we missed out on that step, but we're into the belly time here on this top 20 shootout. 20 sheep folks out there, and this is the one that's going to tell it. $4,000 is at stake, and James McPherson and Duncan Ross from Bailey's Real Estate are in the house tonight, so this is the Bailey's event, and we're really working away at it. John Kirkpatrick, the time is slipping away. That's 27 seconds. That's quite a slow start for John, Phil. Yeah, it is a little bit. It's a little bit. We have seen quicker starts, but hey, as we go along the board, we'll just find out who's going where, and we'll check our numbers and so on, but yeah, 38, 39, 40 seconds, and he's down over the last front shoulder, so, oh, it's not not too bad, not too bad. These sheep, beautiful looking sheep. They've been selected. Great job they've done. Right out onto the back. Hockey goes. He's getting ready to go in for number two. But I see the man on number two, and that's David Buick. And that's the local man. Oh, <laughs> it's going to get exciting. Yeah. We <laughs> well, well, Doug, let's toss a couple of minutes in there, and uh, let's give us a little bit of a, your view there on David Buick's. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, David's been thereabouts for quite a while. The last, this is his fourth open final. In the last few weeks, constantly in the top four, wherever role he's winning. So this is his big night going in there tonight, top qualifier. Uh, it's given him a lot of boost, but no doubt red rag to a bull to the man on stand one. Great stuff, Doug Lang. And down the last side is David Buick. I can see him, the cheap cheeks are out there, he's puffing away and they call him the Iceman. Down the last side he goes and he's wasting no effort. One minute and 30 sevens is ticked by Phil and he's going in for sheep number three. That's not too bad if he can consistently shear like that, that's pretty good. Back on the board he comes now we go to the next stand and who have we got there? We've got Gavin Much and his hand will be flying. The flying Scotsman, well he'll be true to that, don't you worry about that. Up the neck and down the side of the cheek. And look, he's going to put the pressure on right from the start. That's what he loves. That's, That's what, what he, he loves, loves, Phil. And uh, we, he just goes and uh, he's these kind of shearers that we say, well, he'll have a nip and a tuck here. And, uh, and he just scoops along the long blow. Is he getting ready to turn to the last side? The man from Wonga Momona, originally from Aberdeen in Scotland. And he's turning to the last side. I believe he's the man with the pace at the moment, Mr. Doug Lang. Exactly, uh, Gavin's been doing this all season, putting a, putting on the pace. He's tested himself out, coming from behind a little bit throughout the season. This is unquestionably his absolute goal this season is to win this event. He had nasty hand injury during the last year and perhaps thought he might not be sharing at this level again. He's come back and just look at the guy go. He's had two recent wins and he's been constantly runner up to Roland. Well, he's come back even harder and stronger after that uh, injury and there he is. Look at the face on this man, the baby face assassin, I suppose. That used to 
be Paul Avery saying, well, we're going to pass it across to this oh, man now. Oh, oh, oh. Gavin Much can take up that mantle, Phil. You've just woken up the whole of Southland. <laughs> oh, my God. But, hey, look, this is the man from the deep south, the fine wool shearer, the cross country, the crossbred shearer. Over the tail he goes. He's looking pretty good. They've all got number four on the board, so it's all pretty even, the whole lot right through. But we're watching Nathan at the moment. So all you fellas down there in Southland, I know you've got your, your TVs turned on and put on the live streaming. Well, this is it. He's, he's right at it. Right round the ball, the long blow he comes. Four sheep. Have a look at that time. Two minutes, two. Not too bad. Three minutes and 28 Not seconds as this young guy turns to the last side. Sheep number four. The quality is right on his side and we're not showing yep. the outside points at the moment on the bottom of the screen. Isn't it fabulous, the graphics, Doug Lang? Oh. Indeed, brilliant. I see we've got what, four, four, number five. And there he goes. He, he's next and now we've got all the... All six men have got their five fifths on the board. Yeah, they have got their fifth sheep on the board, and that's Murray Henderson, the fielding man. He turns into the undermine. Big strokes under there. Murray Henderson is a top not quality man, but I believe the pace is actually going to get to him a little bit later as he goes up the neck, and I believe he's probably a half a sheep behind, but the guy on stand number six, that's where the pace is coming from at the moment, Phil. Well, that's the one they get trying to beat, isn't it? Because he's, he's been so dominant, so dominant for so long, and Doug will tell us in a few moments, but boy, look at that, down over that last front shoulder. Almost two metres tall, or perhaps he is two metres tall, not too much off of that, but he just bends over. Your remnant of, of Snow Quinn and all those fellows, those big tall fellows used to come out. Oh my God, he can big, handle the sheep. Tall, lean shearing yeah, machine. Reach and right around the sheep. Look there he that. goes down the last side. Oh, and look at this on sheep number six. He's going to be the first one to go in for sheep number seven. We're only on four minutes and 47 seconds. And Roland Smith from Paharakeke Hastings, Heretonga. And he goes for sheep number seven. All the boys up there in Hastings or wherever. But you say he's a Ruawai boy. Oh, and absolutely. The, and yeah, he's brought up on Coomeras. Coomera King. Into the undermine is Roland Smith. Getting ready to chuck that handpiece in there. One, two. Two big strokes there, Doug Lang. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we, we we're going to see the real battle at the end. You suspect this is, it'll be Roland and, and probably, I suspect, David Buick right at the end. That's the way it's looking at the moment, just judging on some recent form. You don't think Gavin much will be in the mix in that battle, Doug? It'll be interesting to see whether Gavin sticks with it. Well, that's a good that. That's throwing the challenge out. Well, look, good. we can't yep. argue with yep. this man, Doug yep. Lang. He's the stats man. All through the year, he's been calling the stats. But turning to the last side is Johnny Kilpatrick, Sheep 7. Uh, David Buick, Sheep 7. Dan in the pen goes Roland Smith. We can go back a little bit closer. Toby, and we don't mind sh talking about it. There he is. Roland Smith is into the belly. Sheep number 8 on the board. He's the only one. He's got a clear belly on the other side. Phil. Yep, yep. He's over the tail, top knot off. I noticed he was running into the pen. He normally takes a one big step and maybe another half, but there was a couple of steps and very quick. Has he changed his little tactics? Yeah, I think he's probably having to move a little bit quicker because the urgency is there. He hasn't been winning with a comfortable margin just of the last few shows. It's been millimetres, it's been fractions of a point. Turns to the last side, but Johnny Kirkpatrick, I saw there just as a little while ago, Johnny Kirkpatrick on stand number one. He's only about three or four seconds off the pace, but the pace is coming from Roland Smith, Doug. Indeed, you can see the guys on the middle stands there, they're doing the cleanest job at the moment. Uh, David, in fact, we you see Murray Henderson, he hasn't even uh, conceded half a point yet. Wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? But he's got to stretch out. At some stage, he can't just rely on that quality, can he? Indeed. He's got to stretch. Indeed, that's the case with Murray. He's uh, obviously lacked the pace. He's got to really give it a shot this time. This is his, this is his third final, two fifth placing so far. So this is probably his big as big a chance as he'll ever get. And he's been cheering well. He's been cheering well around the shows. He's, oh, he's in the mix. He's in the mix. Undoubtedly, yeah, undoubtedly he's been cheering well. But, uh, you know, at this level now with the Baileys Real Estate $4,000 shootout, it's got to be about pace now. I think our two Baileys men are out there cheering. Who are they cheering for? Oh, I think they'll just be happy to be here tonight, Phil. You reckon? Oh, I think oh, so. Oh, I think the, the way they talked the other night, I think they're a bit excitable. <laughs> In the pen goes this guy. Here he is. Down the belly he goes, but Gavin Much is coming down the last side. Here he goes. He's on sheep number nine as he turns into the final few strokes there. He cuts it off the sheep a little bit niggly for him. Gavin Much, look at that. His head doesn't even come up. No. He's down there, out on the 
shearing board into the belly he goes he's on fire the flying scotsman the undermine comes up there <laughs> look how quick he is but david buick smooth strokes there Doug oh, Lang. Beautiful. here we are heading up to the halfway mark four of them have got their number 10 on the board already well that's why we brought doug lang into the commentary folks out there because he's just focused on the stuff the stats every time the shearers walk in the pen doug lang focuses on the on the stats and we're very lucky here in the stadium that we can see all these unfolding in front of us phil oh great wouldn't it have been great to have doug alongside us when we used to do it out there where those other boys are we, eh? should, we should have anyway back to look we're right we're watching john kirkpatrick look at that blue oh, look at that style over the tail quickly top knot off up the neck he goes onto the board with another one we got stands two and three and of course that's david buick and gavin much Remember I said the battle might be one, two, three, and yeah. six. Yes, yes, I think that's unfolding before us because Johnny Kirkpatrick and uh, Roland Smith down the end of blow for blow. Gavin Much has just slipped off the pace a little bit. Doug, you did say that he could slip off the pace, and it has happened. He's just now starting to get involved onto the long blow, but John Kirkpatrick is David Buick's turning to the last side. There he is, Gavin Much. He might have run out a bit of energy, and I can hear the crowd going loudly. David Buick goes in for sheep number 12. Johnny Kirkpatrick has already gone in for 12, and he's got the belly off. Undermine time for John Kirkpatrick. I haven't seen John shearing like this for a long time now. He's he shearing well. Exactly. Very focused. The second half of the match is uh, Johnny's territory. I see we're probably going to scrape it, uh, get them out in under 17 minutes. So that gives you an example of how tough this contest is. He can wind it up, can't he? Johnny's always been able to wind up in that second half. You're quite right, Doug. This could be his second half. And Roland knows that. Roland knows Gavin that. Gavin knows it. So they, they must have something, a plan B, surely. Well, or Johnny, plan B, yeah, the part of it. Johnny's coming probably to the twilight of his career. He's been there a long time, and surely you can't keep putting your body through that, what he's putting it through. Look at his face. It's absolutely full of concentration. Time to change the handpiece for Ooh. Johnny Kirkpatrick. He's asking Scotty for a little bit more warp power as he puts the new handpiece on. Into the belly goes John Kirkpatrick. He's on oh, fire. Look at that. Look he's at that. absolutely on fire, Doug. Let's give a little bit more stats. Yeah, Johnny, of course, his first, uh, his first open final back in 1997. He's done 18 of these open finals. This is now his 19th open final. He's been in the Holy top three smoke. 13 times, won it four times. I mean, the man's got a huge record. He's a legend, isn't he? He's got to be. He's got to be one of the legends. Well, he's current world champion, <laughs> and that's no mean feat. He certainly deserved that title, and if he's going to seal this business tonight, he's going to do the business. He's brought his A game. He's brought his game face on. Down the last side, and the crowd will tell us whether Johnny Kirkpatrick on sheep number 13. There's three of them. He's the first one to go in for sheep number 14. In he goes for sheep number 14. Oh, no, Roland Smith might have just yeah, beat him. Yeah, we're back Pip down Mill. on stand number six, and there he is, Roland Smith, the current Golden Shears Open champion. Oh, and look at the board points, 1.6. Oh, my goodness. His quality. How does he do it? How does he do it, Doug? Well, exactly, but I think you've got to watch here. Look at David Buick, 0.9. On the board at the moment, oh. the only one un under a, a, a point. He's also uh, what's second, second or third in the in the pace at the moment. Uh, definitely, yeah, he's on his game right now. It's always been a case of if David Buick can put it all together on the night, he could be in trouble. He could exactly. And look, that crowd should be going wild. They every, should be every going blow. wild. They are starting to wind up the crowd out there. We're on sheep number number 15 on the board for Roland Smith. Five more in the pen, and he's heading home. A little honey of a sheep as he works the belly. Roland Smith now in the pen goes Murray Henderson, but he's two sheep behind. In the pen he goes. He's got 14 on the board. He's only one sheep behind. Murray Henderson sticking with the pace, Phil. Now look, it's only 12 minutes. <laughs> only 12 minutes. We're heading for record time. Well, it looks minutes. like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Now we've got the wide shot. We can see all six. And back onto the board in the middle. Is that Nathan Stratford? I think it is. Brings another one out. What's he on? 14. There's not a huge gap yet. There is a gap starting to open up. Roland Smith down the end there is just finishing off his 15th <coughs> sheep. And Johnny Kirkpatrick's just coming up the top. And he goes for sheep number six. Oh, look at it. He just Ooh. throws the handpiece down in the pen. He goes in these back shot sheep. Oh, they're shearing like a dream. The belly time comes off for Roland Smith. You watch the big shots under the undermine. All you young shearers out there should be aiming for this job. 
Goes up the neck, goes Roland Smith, and around behind the area works. In goes, this is uh, oh, Murray, Murray Henderson. Henderson. Yeah, Murray, Murray Henderson, Henderson yeah. but he's a sheep behind. Long blow time for Roland Smith. Long blow time there. Coming down the last side is Nathan Stratford, but Murray Henderson throwing the kitchen sink at it, Doug. Yeah, he still is. If this guy can keep with him, just marginally over a sheep, he's got a definite chance. Uh, his mother, as they call him. Well... Maybe tonight's the night because he certainly got that quality right. We'll have a quick look down the board of the quality and by Joe's. Ooh, look at that board quality, Doug. Goodness. It, indeed, David Bjork sitting on a single point there. That's amazing. <laughs> and they've shown, what, 13? How many sheep are we up to now? Where are we? Oh, 16. 16. 16. 16 on the board. Sheep. Back 17 on the board on stand six there. <coughs> and on one and two now. <coughs> So that's David Buick and John Kirkpatrick on sheep number 17. We're watching Nathan Stratford as he screams down the last side. We've picked up Gavin Mutches, but Nathan Stratford is there in the screen in front of you. Here he goes, the man from Wonga Momina, and there's probably some Scottish people, United Kingdom people, having a good old roar there. They might even have a wee drum for the man over there. It's a little bit later in the afternoon. Well, they've got to turn it up now. They've really got to get behind him, no matter where they are in Scotland. <laughs> Come on, you Scottish people. He's doing his best. But here we're looking at now. And look at him. Look at that hand. It hasn't stopped. That's why he shears. That's why Flat he out. shears. David Buick goes in for sheep number 18. And the Johnny Kirkpatrick's got 18 on the board. These two boys are having a good battle. What a good spot for Johnny to be in. Johnny Kirkpatrick's got the comfort of having a man, Ooh. anchor man, push him along. David Buick's actually starting to put a little bit more gas into the into the pedal as he goes he on is. to the long blow. Long blow time for David Buick. Look at that. No wasted blows. He turns for the last side. John Kirkpatrick turns for the last side. These boys are coming down the last side. Kirky's on the last shoulder. Down the last side he comes. But David Buick might have picked him up as Johnny Kirkpatrick throwing everything at it. He is. Look at Johnny Kirkpatrick. Sheep number 18 on the board. The time is only four. We've gone tipped over 15 minutes. Oh, well, Doug. How are we going goes. for stats? Yeah, well, exactly. There we've got rolled. He's onto his 19th. Uh, yeah. Now, four, now three of them onto their 19th sheep. Um, this is where really okay. good stuff. Now these three have battled it out like this before anybody's contest. So we're almost ready to go in and get the last sheep. I think we've got to keep that wide shot going because we want to see what Roland's up to. And look at him down there. And Doug, David Buick is challenging. David He's put Buick. the big challenge in. John Kirkpatrick's not finished either. Coro, I think we've got a little cracker. we got a cracker and the 20th sheep is about to come onto the stage and there's only only three or four seconds in it. Roland Smith's getting ready to pop that 19th one in the pen. He goes. goes in Buick. the pen goes David Buick and that's a wonderful job. Down into the belly they go. Down, down the last side, Johnny Kirkpatrick slipped off the pace a little bit, Phil. I think he has. These other two have got onto it, and I think it's David Buick forcing the issue on the last sheep. Look at this. this oh, is my goodness. This is exciting stuff for the wire rapid people. They've never, <laughs> ever won this final before. Only perhaps two chances over the years, really, with uh, perhaps Greg Herrick when he was doing it and uh, Ricky Pivak some years ago. They've exactly. got a real chance here right now. Well, well here he comes. Chance. We've got a good shot of David Buick as he tips up the last side. Look at the beautiful... He might be in front. Of the is he in front? Then he think, I think it's he's in front. It's blow for he blow. He's in front. Him. He's Bam. in front. Yeah, he got Boom. it. Oh, my goodness. Three seconds in it. Three Ooh. seconds in it. Johnny Kirkpatrick down the last side as well, and he's not that far behind. Half a last side. That's not many seconds. Right out onto the back hock. He knows how to share them. He knows how to keep the quality right at this sort of pace, and this pace has been fabulous. Doug, those, those last ten, I counted roughly under eight minutes. Oh, the last ten of under eight minutes. Well, the time is still ticking by. We haven't even eclipsed 17 minutes, folks, out there. And into the belly goes, uh, into the undermine is Gavin Much. Gavin Much just fell off the Back pace. Back off the fell. pace, yeah, surprising. Fell off the pace. That's very surprising. surprising for him. But you called that, though, didn't you, Doug? Indeed, it has been notable, as I said, but uh, he had to put everything that he's put in together in all of those shows in recent times, try and put it all together into one package tonight. And that's a huge ask, isn't it, when you go back on those three shows? Because there would have been three 20 sheep finals just like this. Indeed, indeed. We had one final recently with four shares. These top four in this event finishing within three and a half seconds. Well, here we are. We're starting to finish now, and it looks like who's going to be next? It's going to be whew, the Scotsman. 
right out onto the back hockey goes. He's just got to keep that leg straight. I think he might have had a couple of little riggers that we didn't pick up either. They wriggle a little bit well, there. You know. this is when it becomes energy zapping. He's this got is, his time taken. And uh, and out in the stadium, I, I believe under those lights, it's probably 30 oh, degrees. It's huge. It's, huge. it's 30 degrees. It's so they're massive. working under extreme heat. And down the last side is Murray Henderson. I think Murray might, oh, they're all on sheep number 20. Yep, this is the best line. I've ever seen it's Murray Henderson good. share. Well, he's in with a shot. If he's that close, he's because it's quality. Let's have a quick look down the board. Oh, look at David's 1.9. Goodness gracious on the board. Oh, clearly, unreal. clearly, this guy is in the hunt. Murray's 1.7. Murray, Murray, Murray Henderson's in the hunt because the job outside, he doesn't compromise on quality. And that's, that's of course, it's all good looking at the at the front, isn't it, Doug? Yeah. But yeah. There, there you're looking at those points now. We've got uh, David Bjork with the pen count to come. Is, is holding the pack. He's about uh, half a point roughly. Uh, got the advantage on Roland Smith at this time, so it's obviously out in, out in the pens. And usually Roland's very, very hard to beat out in the pens. I mean, he's hard to beat anywhere, but in the pens he, he leaves a quality job. Now, that's not demeaning the others, because they can all do it, but of course it's the pressure, you know, who goes where. What a final. Six of the best shearers in the world up there tonight, Absolutely. and we should... We saw those sheep in under 17 minutes. What a fantastic effort. Hopefully the crowd out there in the stadium has given the accolades that those shearers deserve. Oh, and particularly when a wire wrapper boy, Doug, a wire wrapper boy with this crowd. In indeed, yeah. Should be an advantage. Well, should be, should be indeed, but I guess anybody up He's and down... He's a good whited up a man. Anybody up and down the East Coast, whited up a Hawks Bay, uh, has probably got a bit of an advantage in this event these days. Well, well, that's really cool. Yeah, it is. It it's is. really so, cool. So, guys, just uh, as we uh, we uh, wind into the presentations inside of the um, of the show, overall, what's it been like tonight? With we'll start off with the PGG rights. And what what what's your thoughts there, Doug? Well, we get the two guys that have won it before, Nathan and uh, uh, Johnny. It's an event with experience counts. What about that big boy? Oh, that yes. big big man. How did he go tonight? Oh, right, Stacey? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't get a good chance to watch Stacey too well to, to, tonight. He put, obviously put on a good, good performance. I was yakking with him oh, later. Okay. And, he, and he was reasonably happy about the, the way he went. As we said earlier, a big effort for those guys, flying from Australia for four or five times during the, the summer to compete at the qualifying rounds. So obviously very determined to pull off that one and get that spot on the New what? Zealand team. He's my pick, he's my pick for, the, for the PG. You think so? Yeah, he's my pick. Yeah, he, he's, he, he made it look easy. He did. And he could handle them. He knows how to shear Marinos, that's for sure. And he shears a lot over an Aussie, obviously. Oh, OK. But, um, but you know, um, Grant Smith, oh, oh, he's been there oh, and done I that. I still, I still stick with Stacey. Hey, yeah. well, the, tra the trans Tasman. let's have a quick surmise of that. Yeah, obviously the Australians uh, sort of pretty much killed it in the, in the Marinos, I would say. Uh, got so far ahead at one stage, I think, by the time first of... Our guys was on to the crossbreeds. The, the Australians, uh, two, two of the Australians were two sheep ahead. Pretty hard to haul back time-wise, and you can see by the points on the board. Well, I'm going for Australia. Indeed. Phil. You're not, are you? I, I, I just, I don't want to because I believe they have their day in the sun when we go there, but uh, their, their time was but, just too but, good. But, you know, we do have to appreciate and, and recognise that to come over here and... And they've obviously put a lots and lots of time in. I mean, they're all good shearers. And, you know, McIntyre, OK, he hadn't been over as many times as the other two. But the other two have been here shearing crossbred sheep a lot. So, yeah, I, I have to go with you. I think Aussie are going to be hard uh, to beat. We're, so we're all going Aussie. We're, yeah. we're a little bit coup papa, which means we are traitors to our own country. But that's all right. That's the way the Aussie Yeah, I'm OK because I'm 25% Australian. 25% Australian. So the open wool handling. Let's have a little bit of a, a surmise on that, Doug. Wow. Well, obviously Joel Hinardi right at the top of his game. He's had uh, 99 career wins. I think by the look of it, Joel will have number 100 tonight. Uh, yeah, an absolute champion. Only 26 years old with that number of wins. wins it's quite phenomenal. You've, you've, you've scored it a different way, haven't you? I, I tend to think... I think Mary Ann had not the best night. Right. So I, I tend to think she might not be in it. But... Joel, I think, had a, had a... Well, he's determined, because Doug says, you know, that 100 wins is a yeah, big thing. Yeah. Apart from the fact that, really, it's the it's the Golden Shears open wool handing, and that's one of the big ribbons you want to take. It's going to be hard to beat, but I really do think that Cherie, Cherie. put a lots and lots of pressure on him. 
Well, she's always been a bridesmaid, hasn't oh, she? And yeah. uh, I, I believe, and uh, and I went down there and watched her, and uh, I, I, I'm leaning a little bit to Sheree Alabaster. Well, she's, be always a been a, she's always been a very fast finisher, yes. incredibly fast. Now, Joel does the same, but he's never always had that quick pressure right beside him. Cherie was on her game tonight. I think so. She, I think she so. brought her A game. And uh, who are you picking? You're going with sticking with Joel? Yep. You're sticking with Joel. Cherie yeah. Alabaster? I think so. I think um, so. Well, I'm going to sit on both of them and say they're both going to be very, very close. close. Very close. I, I, I think I'll lean towards uh, Joel Henare as well in the open wall. Well, we round it off, guys, with the uh, open there. And let's have a little bit of a debrief on that. Well, before we do that, of course... The plate final. What do they call it? The, 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 it's still a little bit different now, but Axel. <laughs> <laughs> Axel. It, it, that was entertainment. <laughs> yeah. How did he get his singlet off? He ripped it off. He was a magician. That's how he won, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he won it as well. Yeah. I, I never had him as the winner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's uh, interestingly, he's never won a competition in New Zealand. <laughs> he's had about six competition wins in the UK, yeah. and Australia, but he's yeah. never won any competition in New Zealand. He's made the top thirty for the Open uh, seven, seven times and yeah. hasn't got into the yeah. semi final. So uh, he's absolutely wrapped with that. Yeah, he's wrapped. Yeah, and he gave a great speech. He was a good part oh, he's, of a good, he's a good yeah. speaker, and right. um, he's got a, a lovely family there in the, the bottom of uh, Mount Rua Pehu, the Mauna oh, there, okay. and uh, the Reed family from Taihape. Good so uh, he was a worthy winner, and uh, we talked about that. Sorry, Axel Reed, we skipped over you. Thank you very much for, yeah, uh, very for important calling part. us and pulling us up and, and check. So we arrived tonight with the Baileys big top 20 shootout. And Doug, let's let's have a look at the stats there. You've you've called it as you are, as you saw it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think we might be up for an upset tonight by the very narrowest margin. I think the narrowest margin we've ever had in the open final was two hundredths of a point. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Some, sort of something if we go that close again. But uh, I didn't see David Buick putting any foot wrong there. Um, a little bit of a chance he might might sneak in there. Um, he had a good year. He had a very he had good year. He had a very good year. Yeah, and uh, in his in his past in past finals, he, he just had something just missing on each occasion tonight. Well, he tonight it like came it. through. Indeed. Well, the Buick name is synonymous with the Golden Shears. There oh, were some yeah. trophies that came up here tonight with the Buick name on it, yep. and uh, yep. and you'd know very well how those names got there, Doug. Yeah, well, like all this, I mean, they've um, had Willie Buick. Um, um, Dave, Dave's dad, and you know he's been involved like a lot Willie of these Buick. guys. Yep, exactly. We've seen so many of these guys involved with Golden Shears yeah. for many years, more than forty, and very many examples around the place as judges or various other forms of officials. That's what makes Golden Shears what it is. Is, is this commitment of volunteers is just absolutely unbelievable. Are you going to make a call? Are you going to make a call on who's taken out that uh, Bailey's Open? Oh, yeah. I'll David Beer. He'll make a call by the very narrowest of margins. And close. he's never very far off the money, isn't it? This guy yeah, knows, I, yeah, he knows yeah, his yeah. stuff. Yeah. So he's going to David Beer. I, I, I've got to back that up, Doug, because I know the Buick family extremely well and I knew I knew David's grandfather. I worked with him. Like, yeah. The only place they all worked at. So, um, yeah, I, I think if, it's ever, if he's ever had a chance, this is it. So, yeah, I'm going to go and... I think my margin might even be narrower than Doug's, <laughs> you know, because it, you can't really fault what Roland did. And did Johnny do really much wrong? No. Well, he did, right. It didn't really look like anybody uh, had a bad cheer of any sort, not even for a moment there. So. I don't think, out of those three, I don't think there was. So it's going to be very close. But I, I just think maybe this is that little white rap night. Um, well, he's, he's the youngest guy there is Roland Smith, isn't he? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Correct, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make a call. I'm going to go for Roland. Exactly. You've got to look at guys like Roland. And oh, yeah. yeah. And, and the others, you know, travel all over the places. Put your balls on the line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, 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 can, I can see Roland. But it's, it's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard in any, any situation with Roland. Yeah. I mean, what's that great record where he knows? Absolutely invincible. I remember a race horse called Noodlem. Newland years ago, and they had a picket fence for Brian and Roll. He's got one of those as well. Probably, uh, de- uh, yeah, a jolly sight longer. Yeah, he's yeah. been all over the show, all sorts of funny places. Yeah. If, if anybody wants to go on a holiday around New Zealand, look up a map of where Roland's won his contests, and yeah. it should be a pretty good sort of holiday. <laughs> It'd be good, all right. Yeah. But the other thing is too, in the last in the last couple of weeks, they have closed the gap. The other competitors, and and David is one of them. They've closed that gap. 
All right, we're going to close down now, guys, and uh, we're not too far away from uh, bringing on the stage for the presentations. And Doug, I would like to be able to talk to uh, you. You want to talk to Joel. Uh, you want to talk to Cherie. So uh, let's hope that, uh, and we'll see how it unfolds because we are just going to be in for some surprises tonight, Doug. Well, you don't think so? Yeah. It's well, been in. a fabulous night. It's been a fabulous night here at the 2018 Golden Cheers in Masterton's War Memorial Stadium and uh, hopefully these uh, competitors that have just uh, shorn their hearts out will handle their, will, their hearts out, have enough energy to come and talk to us in the studio. So Toby, we're just going to sign off for a little while. I think we need to go and have a cold drink of water. We're a little bit parched. So back to you Toby.
Everyone has been waiting for to find out who 
our champions are of the 2018 Golden Shears. To begin this presentation, we have three very special awards. To speak to the first, the Shearing Sports New Zealand, please welcome to the board, Shearing legend, Sir David Fagan. Uh, it's, it's great to be here uh, on behalf of Shearing Sports New Zealand as uh, national chairman. Every year or two we get a, a, a new master shearer. This year we've had a nomination came forward at the national meeting last year from a guy that's uh, he's done New Zealand proud in many ways, uh, Matt Smith. He's now living in, in England with Pip. and. What I witnessed over there a couple of years ago with his world record of uh, 731 news, uh, for me, the two nine-hour world records are the high jumps, and for Matt to take that on and achieve what he did was absolutely amazing. He's, uh, I've shown in many, many finals with him myself, some big ones in the UK, where he tipped me over a couple of times, and uh, he's... He, shares with distinction and he's just one of those guys that have got a real X factor. So it gives me great pleasure to ask Matt Smith to come up and accept his Master Shearers Award from Shearing Sports New Zealand. Congratulations, Matt. This is a phenomenal achievement, and not many shearers get to this accolade, so well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, um, it is capping off my uh, career as far as... Uh, I'm not going to make it back here as much as I'd like to. It's been a long, drawn-out career, and to have my name against people that I've idolised my entire life, as one right here, is, is, a, is a really, really humbling experience, and uh, one I will treasure forever. I'd really like to thank my family for the support throughout the years um, and everybody that has supported me and my wife in the latter years um, to achieve the later goals that uh, were a pretty big milestone. Um, to all of you young fellas out there, uh, you know, we all start at the same place and sometimes it seems like a really, really long road and it is a bloody long road. Um, but keep your head up, keep going and when they tell you you can't, the best thing you can do is prove them wrong. Um, thank you everybody and have a great night. To make the next presentation, I'd like to invite Bart Hadfield to the board, please. Evening, everybody. Um, I'm here to present um, Kerry Jo Dehuya with her world record. Um, on the 15th of uh, January 2018 at Autopawa Station, owned and farmed by the Robbie family in the Wairapa. It was a fantastic venue um, to hold the record attempt at. And uh, Kerry Jo Tahuya, she saw 452 strong wall ewes with a quality rating of 10.75 in nine hours to set a new woman's record. Uh, these sheep. These sheep had an average wool weight of 3.6 kilos per ewe, uh, well above the 3 kilograms as of the requirement. Um, these were big, strong Perindale ewes, very physical, and tested all of Kerry Joe's month of mental and physical preparation to make this uh, record happen. Uh, the judges, uh, comprising of Arwen Jones from Wales, he was the head convener, Ian Buchanan, Robert McLaren and Bart Hadfield, all thought it was a fantastic an achievement and well done to Kerry Jo and all her team and very proud of what she's done. Thank you.
Congratulations. Uh, Women Shearers are helping us not only grow the brand and exposure of the Golden Shears, but also the sport as a whole, and you're leading the way. Well done. Cheers. Um, kia ora, everybody. <clears throat> I just um, want to thank Doug and Stu Robbie from Auto Power Farms, um, Shearing World, PGG Wrightsons, um, Himura Tua Davidson, um, everyone that I worked with prior to the record that helped out. Um, Stacey, thank you so much for everything. And um, <clears throat> I just want to thank my dad, who's not here. And this is for him. Thank you. We have one more world sharing record to present. Please welcome onto the stage John Fraser. Quiet in the cheap seats, please. <laughs> Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm up here to present uh, Roland Smith with his uh, world record. On July the 24th, 2017, at Tree Frank Farm in Cornwall, UK, Roland Smith was attempting the eight-hour strong wall U record. The previous holder of that record was Leon Samuels, and on the 20th of February, 2017, he short. 605 at Argyle Station in Southland. Roland's wall weight for the day was 3.375. Roland's day consisted of four two-hour runs and he consistently shore 161 a run with a rating of 10.02 and beating the previous record by 39 sheep. Our referees on the day were Eddie Archer from South Africa, Martin David and Owen Jones from Wales and myself. What stood out for Rowley's record was the quality of the shearing and some of those count outs through the day would have probably won open finals. So that was just the credit of Roland and the professionalism he puts around for shearing. I'd also like to thank all the team behind Rowley. Um, Matt was the main man driving that. Their professionalism was something outstanding. So thanks very much, guys, and it certainly made our job easy. Rolly, he sure in the New Zealand team over in the UK for about four or five weeks before every weekend, travelling long hours to get up to those, to, those, um, to those competitions. And with that, and away from home, this was a great record. So on behalf of the World Sharing Society, I'd just like to congratulate Roland Smith. Congratulations. Roland, uh, how does it feel to not only now be a world champion, a Golden Shears champion, and now a world record holder? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, especially since Johnny was over there, he made it bloody hard. Um, yeah. um, now I'd just like to thank Matt and his family, um, Pip, for putting us up there. Um, huge effort to do it on the other side of the world. I wasn't actually that keen, but Matt twisted my arm. So, um, yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, all the family for getting behind me, my wife and family, for um, you know doing everything behind the scenes. It's a long journey to do a record. A lot of hard yards behind the scenes. Um, big sponsors, Levno, AFCO, Swazi, British Walls, and many, many more to get me over there and get me training throughout the whole year. So, um, yeah, all you young fellas that are watching this stuff, eh, we're not special, we're just getting out there doing it, so keep trying and get there one day. Could we please have Shane Cohen 
and the competitors from the PGG Rights and Wool National Sharing Circuit up on the board, please. Just the competitors for the National Sharing Circuit, if you could please make your way up on the board. Presenting this award is Shane Cohen, East Coast Retail Manager, PGG Rights and Wool. Thanks, Kieran. Wait for these guys to get up here, eh? Hey, uh, look, we, we've been here for, uh, for many, many years, and uh, hopefully we'll be here for many, many more. Just got to uh, make sure the corporate coffers keep uh, flowing through. Look, some of these guys have been up here three times tonight, so, you know, these elite athletes really deserve another round of applause, please, people. <laughs> right, that's all I've got to say. The PGG Rights and Wool National Sharing Circuit is one of the hardest to win. First place had 78.2 penalty points. Second place had 80 penalty points. The winner will receive $500 plus $1,300 PGG vouchers plus a Lister handpiece and 12 months free lease of a Hyundai Santa Fe and the McSkimming Trophy. The winner of the PGG Wrightson Wool National Shearing Circuit, John Kirkpatrick. Congratulations, John. This can't be easy. You've done it before, but when you're concentrating on other things as well, this must be a very difficult task and therefore very rewarding to come out on top. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a special thanks to PGG for sponsoring this uh, event and Hyundai for the lease of Santa Fe. Um, it's an amazing prize, so special thanks to you both. Um, special thanks to the farmer and everyone that's crushed the sheep, like, you've, like um, they were actually well presented and I suppose you guys are having a good year this year, so no, were, it's been a good year for us. Um, just a special thanks to my wife, Raylene, and, and my kids, Angela, Mary, Daniel, like, uh, Ricky, my son-in-law, who has supported me throughout my career. Um, like, having a win now is a bit of a bonus for me now, so it's not getting any easier, so I just take it as it comes. But, yeah, special thanks to you all, um, my chiropractor, Melissa, and her husband and family for coming down here and keeping me going, really. So this is for you guys. Thank you. Second place receives $400 and $400 in PGG vouchers. Grant Smith. Third place, $300 and $200 in PGG vouchers. Nathan Stratford. Fourth place, $200 plus $200 in PGG vouchers. Stacy Tehuya. Fifth place, $200 plus $200 in PGG vouchers. Give it up for the hometown boy, Ethan Pankers. And sixth place, $200 and 200 in PGG vouchers, Colin O'Neill.
We have one remaining trophy connected to the PGG Rights and Wool National Sharing Circuit. It is the Godfrey Bowen Trophy for best quality points in the final, with quality points of 18.133. The Godfrey Bowen Trophy goes to Nathan Stratford. Just while we complete the photos, could I invite Roger Hale to the board, as well as the competitors and managers from last night's CP Wool Trans Tasman Wool Handling Test. So just the competitors from last night's Trans-Tasman wool handling test, please. Give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. They're representing their country here at the Golden Shears. They're on their way. The trans Tasman wool handling test uh, happened last night, but due to some unfortunate circumstances that we referred to earlier, we were unable to present it. However, it is a pleasure to be able to do so in front of you this evening. This event is sponsored by CP Wool, and presenting this is Roger Hale. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, we uh, we absolutely love sponsoring this. Um, you know, shearing and um, wool handling is is a huge part of uh, of. Um, oh. Sorry about this. Um, so basically what I'm saying, without wool handlers doing a top job, we don't have a top product. Um, and it's most important to keep that product. Even though the price is so low at the moment, really good. And these guys here just produce quality and just uh, follow through to what these guys are doing. Keep your quality up in the shed. That's what we want to see as a group. See people want to see that. But anyway, we have... Um, Great privilege in um, sponsoring this event. Thanks, Kieran. Thanks, Roger. The winning team of the CP Wool Trans Tasman Wool Handling Test receives $1,000 plus the Trans Tasman Trophy. What do you think, Marston? Is it Australia? Is it New Zealand? It is New Zealand! Congratulations, Joel. You guys have continued New Zealand's proud record in this event. Yeah, thanks. We'd, um, on behalf of the team, we'd like to thank CP Wolf's sponsor. Um, also to the Australian team. You guys put up a good battle every year. Well, probably wasn't one of the better ones last night, but you're always doing well. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see you guys uh, next year over in Australia, or this year in October and keeping this good event going, so cheers.
It's an honour to host the Trans Tasman Test here in Masterton, ladies and gentlemen. So please put your hands together for Australia. Could we please now have Lance Waddell and the Trans Tasman Sharing Test Teams and Managers up on the board, please. Not too far away now, they're just getting together and coming up. In the meantime, I'm going to invite Lance Waddell from Lister Shearing, who sponsor the Trans-Tasman Shearing Test, to say a few words. Thanks, Karen. Well, while they were competing up on the board, I was quite impressed with the amount of tall timber that was on the board. And so, when it comes to the photos, if I could stand next to Nathan and Johnny, it would be much appreciated. <laughs> Over the years, since the inception of the Trans-Tasman Test, there has been 62 tests. 32 of those tests have won, been won by Australia and 30 by New Zealand. But one of the most remarkable things that I think about this is that there's been one person that has shown in 30 of those tests, 28 of them in consecutive time. And I think it's worthwhile that we uh, put our hands together uh, for Mr. Warnest. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, well done. On behalf of Lister and Acto Agriculture, uh, it's coming towards the end of another season, so we thank you very much for your support over the season, and we look forward to uh, meeting up with you again uh, next season. Thank you. The winning team of the Lister Shearing Trans Tasman Shearing Test receives $1,600 plus the Walker Keats Cup. So shall we ask the same question? Australia. Is it Australia? Yeah. Or is it New Zealand? Yeah. Give it up for Australia! It's never easy coming over here and winning a test in any sport, but to come here at the Golden Shears and take this away must be immensely proud of you. Um, it's, a, it's a real shock for me, and a, you know, um, it's like these guys are just surprised you every time. They just come through with the goods every time. They're getting older and older and better and better. So um, you just can't fault them at home, and we couldn't fault them here today. So. Um, Bad luck to New Zealand this time, but you know, um, the boys shore really well today, so um, proud to be an Aussie today. 
Good on you. The Australian team, of course, consists of Shannon Warnes, Jason Wingfield, and Daniel McIntyre. Receiving $1,000. Get behind your own country, Masterton. Give it up for New Zealand. New Zealand team, of course, consisting of John Kirkpatrick, Nathan Stratford and Roland Smith. We do have one remaining trophy attached to this event, that is the Joseph Paiwai Memorial Trophy for top individual shearer. With penalty points of 82.32. The winner of the Joseph Paiwai Memorial Trophy is Shannon Warnest. The last time Shannon won this award, he shouted me bears all night, so I'm looking forward to the same happening again. While the photo is being taken, could I please now invite Mavis Mullins and the competitors in the Golden Shears Open Wool Handling to take to the board, please. This event is sponsored by the Golden Shears Committee. And on behalf of the Golden Shears, Mavis Mullins, past president, will be presenting the award. Kia ora, thank you, Karen. On behalf of Golden Shears, it's my privilege and my honour to be able to present the prizes to the winners of this prestigious event. Always a hard one, always a big one and always well worthwhile. All the best, team. The winner of the Golden Shears Open Wool Handling receives $1,250 plus a Manawatu Knitting Mills jersey plus the Hinido Mason Memorial Trophy. It was pretty clear winner tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please congratulate Joel Henare. Bit of a special announcement, really. This is Joel's 100th Open win. Congratulations, Joel. That is a phenomenal achievement. You are leading the world in this sport, and once again, you've picked up this great accolade. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, yeah, just a lot of people to thank, a lot of family, um, all my whanau. Um, my wife, probably the main player behind the scenes, um, to every great champion there's a backbone and for me there too. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank all my mentors over the years, uh, 100, 100 open wins for me tonight. Um, Tina Rimini, Gina Nathan, Joanne Kumedal, my mum, 
Yeah, those some are just the great names to top off. The people that took me to all these competitions. I started when I was 15 in the Open, so didn't even have a licence. My cousin Dallas, um, another cousin Choppy over in Australia, my mum, and of course my wife. So thank you, all of you, and of course thank you to the sponsors of this wonderful event. Cheers. Great job. And... What an amazing tribute, and Joel, every bit deserved. We also have a cake, ladies and gentlemen. You can't say no to mum and cake, eh? Second place in the Golden Shears Open Wool Handling, receiving $550 plus an MKM jersey, Pagan Karodia from Alexandra. Third place, $300 plus an MKM jersey, Cherie Alabasta. $200 plus an MKM jersey. Give it up for Marianne Buddy. We've now come to the time where we prepare to announce the winner of the Bailey's Golden Shares Open Cheering Final. Before we do, it is tradition to invite the President of the Golden Shears, Philip Morrison. Please come to the stage and say a few words. Welcome everyone here tonight. What a great crowd you've been, absolutely excellent. And we've had some little special moments as we've just seen. But uh, welcome to Mika and Alistair as MPs. Other special guests, uh, Lynn, Sir David, and in particular our sponsors. As we've seen tonight, with, and uh, with, with the many of the finals we've had today, the sponsors have been up here and in particular there's been some great comments about Golden Shears. So we thank you so much for your support for our events. We have new sponsors this year. Rural Woman New Zealand, 
the Warrapa Times Age, Warrapa Helicopters, Supreme Automotive re Refinishers, Cytecton, and Baileys. You will notice on the pen doors we have two new core flutes, stands two, stands five, Baileys. They are our first ever sponsors of the Golden Shears Open Shearing Competition. Thank you so much, James, and your team. James is the principal and ownership of Gisborne, Hawke's Bay, and the Wairapa franchises. It's been fantastic meeting you and your team and the support that we have gained in the last five weeks. It's a real tribute that you are now on board to support us. Thank you so much. There are just so many volunteers that make this three days a success. And it's just so hard to single any and everybody out. But I must congratulate the sheep providers this year and the condition of the sheep, it has been mentioned here before, one of the competitors. Absolutely fantastic, absolutely great shearing. But the, the, behind that, uh, we also have shearing gangs from the Wairapa that hop out and crutch those sheep up for the competitions. So thank you so much to those guys. Just they, uh, they hop up here again, some of them, and shear the sheep for the wool handlers, and the, especially the uh, resident wool handlers as we have for the shearing events. But there are just so many others from the caravan to the points. It's impossible to name you all, but so many. Thank you. To our judges, Thanks so much for your travel to Masterton. You've been a fantastic team. It's also been absolutely great once again to have the Australians here for their battles. So many thanks to uh, also the competitors who've supported us this year. We've had a 20% increase from last year, but noticeable amongst that was the young competitors. We have a little scheme that's now operating with uh, youngsters who are trained in either wool handling or shearing and uh, we welcome those supporters who turned up with those young guys and that's where it all starts we just hope you stick with uh, learning to shear and wool handle in a proper manner and that's where competitions just help that so thank you to uh, our competitors thank you to the audience absolutely fantastic night Just before we get to the Bailey's Golden Shears Open Shearing Final, we do want to specifically acknowledge our resident shearers and wool handlers, our presenters and call stewards and commentators, and all our volunteers, the hundreds of volunteers that got behind this event. Just a specific thank you from the Golden Shears. I'd now like to invite Duncan Ross, and James McPherson from Bailey's and the six finalists in the Bailey's Golden Shears Open Shearing Final to please make their way to the board. Presenting the Bailey's Golden Shears Open Shearing Final is Duncan Ross and James McPherson from Bailey's. Thank you, Aaron. I've prepared a full speech here, but it's really about you guys here. Uh, mate, I'd just like to say it's been an absolute, uh, I was in, in awe of the skill and the athleticism here uh, in this Open Final. and um, and. Throughout the three days, the competitors across uh, across the group. It's been a uh, long-held uh, ambition of mine to get down here and watch the uh, the skill and athleticism. And uh, man, what a show! Unbelievable. Um, 
I guess having the opportunity to uh, to be part of this now as uh, as a key sponsor, um, you know, we're we're super proud to be part of that and uh, and and uh, hope to have that move forward into the future uh, as part of this. Uh, I mean, it's been going for 50, 58 years now. Um, we look forward to having a long long relationship with us as well. So congratulations to all the competitors and these guys. Thank you, Duncan. It's very heavy young fella to make the main spiel, but I, so I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but then I, I was talking to Bud Hadfield just a wee while ago, and I said, Bud, where's the boss? And he goes, she's home feeding the dogs. But it reminded me of what sort of the beginning of the journey here. Every year, Nuku would ring up the office there in Gisborne and say, sponsor the uh, shearing at the Wairau show. And so we'd sponsor the shearing and the rodeo. Not allowed to talk about that, but we never mind. But um, so my point is, it started with Nuku. Then I met my cousin Ken at the Wire or Show once judging, and he said, "Hey, we better do something." And of course, now I'm down here, down this way a lot more often. Well, we're sponsoring the Open final, and, and I couldn't be more proud and more thrilled. Um, so, what an event! It's about the athletes. It's about the shearers. And, and, and I think the point there, though, is too, is don't give up on sponsorship. Just keep chipping away everywhere like Nuku Hadfield. She never gave up. She never forgot. Thank you. Amongst the shearers standing in front of you, there are nine Golden Shears titles and three world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the six best shearers in the world. There are many possibilities tonight, and the questions going through your head must be of the ilk of, will we have a new winner? Will we have a wider upper winner? Will we have an international winner? Let's find out. The winner of the Bailey's Golden Shears Open Shearing Final will receive $4,000, plus the Golden Shears Open Challenge Trophy, plus a spot in the New Zealand team to take on Australia, and a Lister handpiece. The winner had penalty points of 57.2. Second place penalty points of 59.6. The winner of the Bailey's Golden Shears Open Shearing Final for 2018, Roland Smith. Roland, um, in winning this tonight, you have been the first shearer to win three Golden Shears titles back to back since Sir David Fagan. And in also in doing so, you are now the third most successful shearer in Golden Shears history. Congratulations. Thanks, Kieran. Um, yeah, it's a huge honour to be up here amongst these great people. Um, Awesome guys, awesome final. Doesn't get any harder than Golden Shears. Um, you know, you practice all year and come up here and it can just fall to pieces. So, yeah, awesome to, to be up here and have a win. Um, thanks again to my family, Ingrid and my kids for supporting me. Um, all my family for coming down. Um, Heinegger, who I forgot to thank in the other speech. Um, and Ants Bryant for doing my gear. Um, all the judges, all the wall handlers, all the organisers. Bailey's for stepping on board, that's unreal, thank you very much. All the other sponsors and everybody have a good night. Second place receiving $2,000.
give it up for David Buick. Congratulations, David. You've done what it up a proud, mate. Well done. Third place, $1,200, John Kirkpatrick. Fourth place, $900, Scotland's Gavin Much. Fifth place, $800, Murray Henderson. There are sharers that go their whole career without reaching the final, so put your hands together for Nathan Stratford. We have two remaining trophies. They are the John Henson Memorial Trophy for best quality points in the Open Final. And we have the R.E. O'Hara Memorial Trophy for best quality points in any final. It may come as no surprise. With penalty points of 7.65, both trophies go to Roland Smith. Your 2018 Bailey's Golden Shares Open Sharing finalists. That concludes our evening tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being part of what was a very special event. Safe travels home, and we look forward to seeing you back here in Masterton next year. Thank you. Hey folks out there in the world wide web, we've come to the end of the night and we've got some presentations that have been uh, handed out and we bring into the studio this evening, live from the Wairarapa Mo um, Memorial Building, Mr Joel Henare, the champion Golden Shears, oh heck, fifth time? Sixth. Sixth time. Six times he's won this event. $1,250, the beautiful red ribbons, the trophies. Congratulations, and at this time we congratulate you. Kia ora, kura. Ah, very settled man, Joel Henare, and uh, we welcome into the studio Erica. She's in here with us this afternoon or this evening, and it's lovely to have you here, Erica. So, Joel, family. Yep. You talked a lot about that up there on the stage. Yeah, you know, any champion, yeah, you look at Ronnie, uh, Roland, uh, Johnny, David, they, you know, their family is the backbone. Your whānau, and especially, you know, with us Māoris, we're always about, always about whānau, tautoko, support. Um, and over the years, right from when I was young, um, you know, I've always had these people around right, me with the right, great support. Right. And to a round off the evening, there, there was a, a possession with a, with a cake that came up to you. What, what was that all about? Oh, the cake, yeah, you know... Celebration of um, 100 open wins. Um, yeah, it's just come out of the blue. So Did it, you know about that? No, no, I didn't know. Well, I'm a, pleased you didn't know about good, that. It was a good surprise because <laughs> otherwise I thought, Chucks, what if I didn't? Yeah. yeah, what if you didn't? They bloody well jinx. Could have been a jinx, <laughs> but no, it worked out perfectly. And uh, who was the instigator of that? Oh, I think my mum and, oh. you know, a few others in there. Was but, that candy uh, I saw with the That was candy. candy. And who else was up there with the cake? Oh, that's the friend I've been staying with for the last, since I first started winning here. Wow. Six years ago, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Then the haka. Tika tonu. Wasn't that great? Oh, I did, that's the best haka I've seen in the stadium. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Um, you know, it takes me back to when I won the world title here yes. for the first time, 2012, and... Uh, same thing, they did a haka for me and, oh, 
just emotional. There yeah. was 20 or 30 of them up there. There was, there yeah. was, yeah. Great, great. No, I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful result. And uh, the Golden Shears has seen fit to, uh, to have that big reward. What's the trophy? This is the Hinaro Mason Memorial Cup and uh, Hinaro local wool yes. handler, you know. The Mason whanau. Yeah, a big family. So, no, it was an honour to, um, it's always an honour to have your name on this trophy. Well, Joel, you're only 26 years old. Rua te kaumaha ono. You're very young, and to have achieved what you've achieved, a world champion, you've got the uh, 100 uh, wins under your belt. What's the future for Joel Henare? Um, look, uh, I'm not too sure. The, the wool, I always love wool. That's all I ever think about, and I'll always get to these big competitions. There's no doubt about that. This this show here, I'll never miss. Um, and there's a few other big ones. Uh, the smaller shows, probably not so much. Yeah. Trying to get to them. Um, just focus on the family. Because you're you're domiciled on the on the west coast in the South Island. Now, yes, aren't you? that's right. Yes, a small place called Machuaca, just by Nelson. So, yeah. Wow, well, it's it's great, and and you've got a few people gotten in behind you in the in the last while. You've got some sponsors and things like that. Oh, a big part to play undermine. Um, they're the they've just been wonderful all the way from back home in Gisborne. They've started out with um, the shearing singlets. You know, finding um, quick dry singlets that dry fast for sports. You know, like this instead of the cotton that absorbs all the sweat. The singlets. You know, they dry as you sweat, so that's what you want. We call them fit for purpose. Yeah. 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 And uh, and uh, how far away are trow- trousers? Yeah, they've got um, some tights there for the for the wool handlers, but um, you know they're just starting out, and so their their line is getting bigger oh, and right. bigger. Well, Joel, we're coming to the end of the time. I won't hold you up. Yep. You obviously want to catch up with everybody. <laughs> and uh, is there anybody especially out there in the World Wide Web that you'd like to say hi to? Anybody at all? Oh, I'd just like to thank all my family down, my in-laws down in Machuaca and my babies back home. Yeah, my in-laws are looking after the babies. And, um, yeah, without them, wouldn't be able to get here and do what I did. So, Great. yeah. Well, we've seen Joel grow up from a young man. When did you first start competing? Oh, I started competing when I was 12 in the junior. 12-year-old, and I've been there on your journey with you all the way, and you've developed into a very fine athlete, a very fine speaker. So, Joel Henare, kei te mihi atu ki a koe i tēnei wā, and uh, ko koe te toa, you are the boss, you are the champion for the year 2018, the Golden Shears champion. So folks out there, we're going to go back to the studio, uh, to the stadium for a moment, but now we pass the time back to uh, Joel to say one last hurrah. Oh, yeah, thank you, Koro Kilda, and uh, to all your live viewers and uh, all my friends and family watching on the web, uh, thank you for your support over the years. Cheers. Thank, oh, kia. kia ora. Thank you, Toby. There's always more to be done on the farm. Just like me and my rugby, you need to take time out to perform at your best. Find out what works for you, then lock it in.
located in Masterton, in the heart of one of New Zealand's top food and wine destinations. Copthorn Hotel and Resort Solway Park Wairarapa is the place to stay while exploring this stunning region. Guests can relax and enjoy the variety of resort facilities, including indoor and outdoor swimming pools, tennis, squash and volleyball courts, golf driving range, gymnasium and children's outdoor playground. It's the ideal location for conferencing, leisure breaks, corporate events and weddings. Offering a variety of stylish accommodation options that includes luxurious executive suites, superior rooms, junior suites with a spacious design, and family-friendly standard rooms, all with patios that feature a town or garden view. Start your mornings with a continental breakfast spread in the grill, and in the afternoon, enjoy a leisurely high tea. The Café Solway is ideal for a quick pick-me-up or a long lunch, where families with young kids will love the children's playground area. The Heineken Bar at Solway Park is perfect for after-work drinks or after a long day of sightseeing, and it welcomes you with a great selection of whited upper and international wines, cocktails and beers, followed by gastronomic delight made with the freshest local produce in the grill at Solway Park. Host your meeting or event from seven conference rooms that can accommodate up to 500 people. Or we have all it takes to make your dream wedding come true, set in our beautiful gardens made more romantic by sunlit trees and lawns. Choose to stay with us at the Copthorn Hotel and Resort Solway Park Wided Upper. So what's the best cover, Dave? Well, I reckon you need. I've got three down of it, three and a half. Your thoughts, Dave? Well, the best thing you could do is. So what's the biggest risk then, Dave? Well, the main thing is for advice worth listening to. 2018 has come to a close. Uh, folks out there in the World Wide Web, we're beaming live around the world and compliments of Noise Productions and Wired Up a TV. We've just seen the most fantastic open shearing final in years and it was down to the wire and uh, we've uh, managed to uh, lasso the champion tonight, the Baileys champion and uh, Roland Smith, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure this time last year we were talking to you and you were sweating like anything but tonight you're very composed. How are you feeling? Feeling. Yeah, good, good, good. It was a, it was a good final. Um, as always, Golden Shears is a, is a hard, hard final. It's one of the hardest ones we ever share. And bagshot sheep, honest, traditional Romneys, and strong, strong sheep, and, um, and you just can't ever let your guard down. And that was, it was awesome night. Well, in the studio here this evening, we had some experts. I had Mr. Doug Lang and uh, and Phil O'Shaughnessy on the sides, and and they were experts, and they actually called it David Buick. Uh, no faith. Well, well, one 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 man is a wider rapper man, see, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and another man, no, no. Phil was actually a Kumita man. Yeah, he's a Kumita man. <laughs> he's yep. a Kumita man. So tonight is is the champions' night. How many on the trot now? I don't know. Golden cheers, I mean. Oh, three, three in a row now. Three in yeah. a row, and yeah. uh, and, and um, it it looks like um, you're just actually percolating on the gear. What what about the gear? Yeah, the gear is important, eh? Like um, it shows every time you come to the Golden Cheers, you've got to have um, got to have the gear to share these sheep, and especially twenty sheep in a row like that. You know, it's got to be running, and um, the gear was definitely running tonight, so it was good. Who's in your corner with your gear? Uh, Ants Bryant, hey, he's, he's, um, he's a bit of a wizard and, you know, all these young fellas out there that are struggling, you know, he's not hard to find he's, um, and, he's, and he's really good and he's willing to help anyone. So. Well, I understand he does the young Tegwin Bradley's uh, yep. gear as well. He's yep. a senior champion. Yeah, and he touched up young Brooks' gear before he went up in the juniors. So, yeah, no, he's, 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 he's really good. Good. Um, well, we uh, we have a, a big representation of your family here this yeah. evening, and they're all here to watch. So, who's all here with, from your family? Um, yep, uh, my wife and kids, and um, her, her parents, and dad, and and Matt is over from England with his wife, and Doug with his girlfriend. Um, yeah, big contingent this year, but of course, Matt got his masters and presented tonight, which was pretty awesome, and um, got my record as well. So, yeah, no, dad came down to witness that, which is awesome. 
Well, you're at the top. You're at the top of the game. It's uh, only one way to go now, <laughs> and, it's a, and it's a hard one to maintain. Uh, we've got France next year. That's obviously coming into a focus for you, and uh, we wish you well. We won't hold you up anymore, Roland. It's been a long three days, and we just appreciate that you take the time to come out and talk to us. No worries. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you, and good luck for the next uh, show. Cheers, mate. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Hey. And when you've got a lot of people involved, then you've just got to be on your game. Firstly is employment contracts. We've written a specific to our industry. It's been written by industry for the industry. Health and safety. Again, we went to a specialist provider of health and safety products. We wrote our manual by the industry for the industry. We're looking to actually make it easier for a business owner to be compliant in those areas around health and safety. I've been a member for 27 years. You need people around you that are going to represent you. And as a group, we're uh, very well represented. It is still the only industry advocate that works for us as their employers. We've really become quite a strong advocate for whatever's right for our side of the industry. You know, we're dealing with things with the IRD, you know, ACC, you know, the Holidays Act, you know, and the employment agreements. Never more so now has the urgency been to get your business to be compliant. And if you don't, you're going to run some huge risks. Essentially, we look after all the 